Hi everyone, so very warm welcome to the next session on SAP FSM. Today we are going to talk about business rules. My name is Sam. So let's look at, so why or what exactly is the business rules? So guys, again, the most simple definition of business rules is business rules help us to automate a business process. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, let's say whenever you assign an activity to your technicians, you might, you might want to send them kind of a notification. Or now let's say in case if your activity or your service call is completed, now you might want to send an email to a customer. And there are so many more examples like that which has been listed here. Okay, so now you say we can, using business rules, we'll be able to create some kind of a follow-up activities. We can invoke the optimizer based on events or schedules. We can call external APIs to do some kind of a calculations. My bit can be linked to your IoT devices. Let's create some follow-up activities. So there is a lot which can be done with the helps of a business rules. But now the question comes. I hope everyone is clear from the use case wise why do we need the business rules but the important is how does the business rule work now if you look at this particular section so here we have three things which is very important first is your general information okay like which just talks about what is the business rule all about then the next which is the most important one which is the trigger and the third one is the action as i've mentioned that you need some kind of a trigger point now i think in my first example i said when you assign a activity to a technician you want to send an email now assigning an, an activity is kind of a trigger point and that action is that it sends some kind of a notification so this is high level what is a business rule all about now what we can do is we can actually look into the system. How does it actually looks into the system? Let me quickly jump into the system. So we are already into the business rules screen. So this is the screen. How does it look like? Okay. So uh, once we f reach to this business rules screen, so again, if you want to explore more, I think there are some kind of a sample uh, notification which is already being available into the system. Uh, in case if you want to look on that part, that's that will be great. But I think I we just created one of the custom rules like from the scratch just to test it out. Now one thing before I go ahead, there are two there are different different type of rule also. So, so there are type two and type three. Again, I think we have discussed in our session how does both type two and type three works out. But again, I think currently as per suggestions from SAP, they suggest you to create more and more rules on type three as such. So let me just quickly jump into one of the uh, business rule. Okay, so this is how my screen look like. Again, on the top right, there is a bit of a definition which is being given by a standard which says a business rule is a rule which define an action which take place as a result of some event. So again, the event here is a trigger point. The cloud implements single rule in general of type event condition action. It detects and reacts to incoming schedule events. For example, it can be used to alert a manager when certain items are out of stock. So again, that's again a perfect example. Now let me just uh, decouple this complete screen. I think the first, as I've mentioned, is kind of a business rule. Then we have a trigger point and the last one is the action point. The good thing is on the right side here, we have some kind of a maintenance where it talks about when this was created, when this was updated. And here from execution log, you'd be able to do some kind of a monitoring. And trust me, when I just talk about the business tools, which is currently in SVP FSM, it's very detailed out how you monitor. You can just check the performance. How does it went? If in case, if it goes for a toss, what exactly is the reason here? Now, if I just talk about this specific object, I can quickly click on edit here. Now, 
a first thing is definitely you have some information of label which is might be your name description technical contact and a threshold so this is one of the very interesting functionality i like it anytime in case if your threshold reaches 50 percent automatically your notification will go to this email id who is going to be the responsible for the business rules and which is which is actually makes sense now let's say you have created a business rule and you think that it should work fine but system sees frequent issues so there is some kind of a threshold value being set anytime if system reaches meets the threshold it's going to send you some kind of email that we are seeing this kind of error so you can come here and you can fix it now the second part again is triggers when i just talk about trigger here uh, on a trigger point so there are different trigger points some can be schedule some fsm events object create object update might be in case if there is an uh, uh, action from a erp connector so there are so many different trigger points being available here now let's say might be if i choose one simple object which is object create so there are different type of objects which is being available service call activity okay so there are different object types being available now here we have defined this uh, rule by default as uh, type 2 but you can you can if you're creating a new one you can define type 3 you have order you have execution like how do you want to execute it uh, after synchronization with client application du uh, during uh, synchronization with client application i think i think definitely is always uh, a good choice to have a synchronous because a uh, asynchronous because if you try to do synchronous everything so what happens is after directly after directly the same that request has to be executed so you have to look at the use case but i would suggest in case now a use case where assignment of a case or an activity you want to send a notification you don't need a synchronous might be in case if you just take a two second of a delay i think that should be okay uh, then you can define even the delay part here what permissions then here the interesting functionality of a variable how do you read the very values from object i think this is an interesting part which we have covered in detail about in our course then if if there are any kind of conditions you want to define it now let's say might be if you want to define uh, the specific rule only for service call with a specific origin okay so you can define here in this conditions okay so again that defining that is is also very straightforward you can you can define it uh, here in this particular screen okay so just a small thing how how to how you can access different variables similarly now the important part is action you can define even the multiple actions okay it's not that if if there's a one trigger so there there can be just one actions no you can define a multiple actions okay anytime in case if you need more actions you can just click on plus and you will be able to define it and i think the beauty here is uh, if you want to even sequence this action you can do that part too now let's look at the action part here action also it's pretty detailed out okay so it cannot be covered even in like a two or three sessions because so many of options which is available into the business rules okay so it can help you to build a checklist report a schedule activities some kind of requirement delete object webhook send email notification push notification so there are so many actions which is being given you straight out of the box so that's the beauty of overall this business rule and trust me it's a very very powerful and once you are able to define your business rule the best part is you will be able to validate this bit okay so again this was just a quick preview of how your business rule uh, look like it to the system just to show you that how realistic or how you can vision it out that it, this functionality works uh, again uh, in case if you are interested in learning more on SAP FSM I would uh, uh, look at our sessions available on SAP FSM on over the internet some blogs and still in case if you're interested in in, in in the course please feel free to reach out to me this is my mobile number or you can just give me a whatsapp and this is my email ID looking forward to have you in our course Thank you.